We need to reorganize our economies to make them more sustainable. We need all economies to join the effort, including the developing countries. Especially in these countries, the question remains whether that transformation will be compatible with economic development. We at the German Development Institute have uh, tried to address these questions. Uh, we've organized a conference in June 2018 and we've in invited experts from all over the world to give us their evidence and their opinions on the topic. And here's what they told us. Let's start our overview with mere possibilities. Can emerging economies compete in the green race? I would say they can, absolutely so. I mean, it's quite the complicated picture Everybody has a comparative advantage in one technology or another or in one sector or another. Everybody also has uh, weaknesses and threats. So yes, developing countries, emerging markets can compete. Not every country has to be a sort of a, a patent-driven innovator and, and technology leaders. A lot of countries will be followers. So for a lot of countries, the issue will be to adopt technologies rather than to develop technologies. We know that you can spread uh, technologies quite effectively by promoting foreign direct investment, for example, um, and, and, and by having trade policies and, and an open regime that makes it easier for technologies and capital to spread across the globe. Having identified the opportunities for poorer countries, what needs to be done to make green transformation a viable alternative for them? In order for green transformation to be a viable alternative, it has to fulfill two criteria. The first is it has to be compatible with the overall goal of most developing countries, which is poverty alleviation. The second is that it has to uh, overcome the key structural features of natural resource use and poverty in developing countries. And that is extreme resource dependency of both exports and populations on natural resources. The second is um, land use change, which is coupled with economic development and greenhouse gas emissions. The third structural feature is poverty is increasingly rural, agriculture based and involving the poor, uh, the young and the poor. And the final thing is the geographic concentration of rural populations in marginal areas. If we tackle those things directly and if we deal with poverty alleviation, then green, green transformation has a chance to be an alternative and viable development strategy. Many expect China to become the powerhouse of green technology development. Will that happen? Yes, I think to some degree that China is already uh, the uh, powerhouse in, in green technology uh, in terms of uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, PV installation, uh, in terms of uh, uh, electric vehicle technologies, and in terms of uh, wind, uh, uh, windmills. Uh, so I think China has already, uh, you know, quite advanced in, in those technology development. And also China is also moving, um, uh, it's trying to reach its goal of 20% uh, of all its energy supply be renewable. With China embarking on the road to green growth, let's have a look at other rising powers. Does India have opportunities in the global green economy? In short, the answer is yes, but... Um, uh, but actually being able to grab the opportunity and make something of it is a slightly more complicated uh, story. Um, India does have an opportunity because in some sense, the size of its market offers it a chance to, uh, to use that strategically in order to build uh, capabilities in, in, to be able to engage with the green economy. India also has, at least for a developing country, uh, a quite a good uh, science and technology an industrial base. India has been very, very, um, um, very aggressive and very successful actually at uh, deploying uh, LED lighting. In the last few years, have deployed about 300 million LED units. When we first started the program in India, it was the cost was about rupees 310. That would be just under five dollars for for um, um, for a bulb, and now it's down to 38 rupees, which is probably 60 cents. So the cost has dropped on dramatically. The production has, has increased uh, significantly in the country, but I think to go from that to being able to innovate and really, in a sense, be able to uh, um, uh, 
manufacture all the components locally and also to uh, innovate and come up with new products to be able to uh, you know increase the performance and all of that uh, i think i think we still have have some way to go on that africa faces severe problems with regard to finance technologies and institutions does the new green paradigm hold promises for the African region? Africa does have uh, opportunity in the uh, green economy. Um, based on experience from our study that we did on Ghana and Nigeria, uh, we actually sought to find out, uh, we actually sought to examine the extent to which firms that adopt green uh, uh, em environmental protection policies in their ordinary, I mean, their day-to-day -day, um, operations and how that affects their productivity and, and competitiveness. And we realized that uh, indeed those firms were uh, doing far, far better than the firms that do not have uh, such policies. So in the, in, it means that uh, if, if government, African government are able to ensure that the regulations, I mean, we, we're able to implement all the laws that relates to uh, environment, I mean, green industrialization. In the end, the firms stand to gain and the nation also stand to gain. Latin America has also fallen behind in the global economy. The Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean advocates a big environmental push to revive the regional economy. Will Latin America use the green economy as a springboard for building competitive industries? I think there is different cases where in some sectors the, the countries in the region are doing quite well. Recently Chile, Mexico, part of Brazil, they are introducing very renewable uh, technology and energy. This is quite good, but the region needs a more comprehensive policy. That means not only one specific sector, that is good, it is fine, but to have a larger view, this is a more approach on development. That is the reason we call big, uh, big uh, environmental push. We know that rich countries, such as OECD countries, can compete. But will they be the only beneficiaries when green technologies are developed? Well, OECD or most advanced countries may be leading on the frontier technological innovation. But in terms of uh, applications and business models, we also see many emerging economies doing a lot of uh, great things. So I wouldn't say it's only developed countries uh, um, that are leading uh, on this front. And in terms of political commitment, very often at the highest level, we see a lot of uh, emerging economies where we see this from, from uh, you know, China and Kazakhstan to, to Chile, where we do have the highest level of government embracing the green growth uh, policy agenda. One could consider the fact that it's the developed countries that have been for many decades hardwired to run their economies on fossil energy. So we could say that maybe it may be harder for developed countries in some ways because the stranding of asset may be greater. So far, we've talked about countries and regions, yet competitiveness stems from the action of firms. When do firms go green? Firms go green for, I would say, for three reasons. One, they're asked to go green by regulators or the government, or two, there are social movements where they're, they're being, communities are complaining about uh, emissions or pollution or other things. And then the third reason would be if it's in their actual interest. If by, if by going green they're actually able to save money because they're using um, their resources more efficiently. Unfortunately, uh, the second and third reasons aren't so common and usually firms don't go green unless the incentives are in place and they're being facing, for example, higher carbon prices or carbon taxes or higher prices for coal. So usually on their own, they won't go green. And that's why it's so important to have the right policy uh, in place and the right incentives in place and, and to have communities that are really asking for a greener environment. What the Indian government did is they imposed a tax which made coal a lot more expensive, a coal tax. And it was so effective that they actually made the tax even higher. And that has, uh, our research suggests that doing that really forces firms to use less coal and to look for cleaner sources of energy.
What are the right policies for making economies greener and more competitive? I think it's very hard to uh, say what are the right policies for every country, for every technology. I think one of the things that we're learning with the latest research is that depending on the technology and the context, different policies might be needed. And in fact, not every country might be able to benefit in the same way for different, from the same um, technology. So we have a lot of evidence from high income countries on what type of policies can incentivize uh, short term innovation in, um, in small firms. So we have a lot of evidence on patents, on financing, on survival of startups. Uh, we also have now a growing, grow, growing amount of evidence on the types of policies that, for example, China put in place to create a domestic industry for wind in China. And we also see that the way in which China became a global leader manufacturing solar panels was uh, very different. So we see that in the same country, in two different industries, there was a very different pathway. So I think we really need to look across a range of technologies and a range of countries to decide what the best policies are. In addition to the examples that the expert mentioned in these interviews, we learned a lot more in our international conference. Additional money flowing into Uganda, into renewable energy projects. China uh, reaping early mover advantages from being the first country that builds electric vehicles at mass scale. South Africa uh, investing in waste management, thereby creating jobs and, and new technologies. But what's also clear is that these uh, examples do not kind of materialize automatically. Go governments need to take the right, make the right, set the right incentives. They need to make sure that polluters pay, that resource users pay, where market instruments don't work, that uh, government regulate accordingly, and uh, that when they design environmental policies that they keep the economic co-benefits also in mind. <laughs>